We're going to take a look at number 26 from section 4.6 in the Forrester book. Uh, this is the idea that differentiability implies continuity. Specifically, these problems are asking me to find a value for a and b to make the piecewise function differentiable at the point where the function changes. Uh, I'm going to take a look at problem number 26 here. Uh, here's my piecewise function, and this is done or the break in the equation takes place when x is equal to 2. And remember that two things need to happen here. The function has to be differentiable, but if it's going to be differentiable, it has to be continuous. And so I'm actually going to show the idea of continuity first. So I have my original function, my f of x equals negative quantity x minus 3 squared plus 7 for x is greater than 2 and second of all ax cubed plus b where x is less than 2 and so I'll take a look at this first uh, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to show that this has to be continuous and or specifically I need to find values of a and b that are going to make this continuous and keep in mind the AP people want to see limits here if this function is going to be continuous the right and left hand limits are going to approach the same value and by the way that value needs to be the same value that the function is defined at when x is equal to 2 so I'm going to find the right and left-hand limits, these values need to be the same. Okay, so the right-hand limit, uh, this of course is coming from the, actually, uh, let me do the, the left-hand limit first. Uh, that's when x is less than 2. Okay, this is the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side, and um, again, from the negative side here, uh, this is the x is less than 2 part of my equation. Uh, that is of ax cubed plus b. And this function is defined when x is equal to 2. Uh, or at least the limit is defined here. I don't have any asymptotes or anything like that at 2. So I should be able to substitute in 2 for x. And I end up getting 8a plus b that function has to equal the limit from the positive side, the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side, okay, or from the right-hand limit. So this is my right-hand limit, okay, coming from the positive side of x. And once again, the limit, uh, in this case, this is going to be when x is greater than or equal to 2, that's going to be of negative x minus 3 quantity squared plus 7. Um, again, this function is defined when x is 2, or this limit is defined when x is 2, so I can substitute in 2 for x. I'm going to get negative 2 minus 3 squared plus 7. Uh, 2 minus 3, of course, is negative 1. Squared is 1, but this is negative. Uh, so this thing here is going to work out to be negative 1 plus 7, which is equal to 6. Okay. If this function is going to be continuous, these two values need to equal each other. 8a plus b needs to equal 6. I've got two variables. It means I'm going to need to write another equation. Okay? This function can't just be continuous, okay? because if it's merely continuous, it's possible there could be a cusp or a corner in my graph. So I also need to make sure that this graph is differentiable. Uh, specifically, if it's going to be differentiable, it means that it needs to approach, the derivative needs to approach the same limit from both sides. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to write the derivative of my original function. Okay, if we look up there, uh, the derivative, using the power rule, is going to end up being negative 2 times quantity x minus 3 to the first power, so drop the power by 1. Derivative of the inside function is 1, so I don't need to worry about that anymore. Derivative of 
7 from that original equation is 0. And so that should be my derivative. This is when x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, uh, the derivative of ax cubed plus b, that's going to be 3ax squared. Uh, derivative of b, b is a constant, so derivative of b is just going to be 0. That drops out, and that is for x is less than 2. And again, the right and left hand limits need to be the same. So to find my left hand limit, uh, that's going to be the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side. And of course that's going to be the place where x is less than 2 of 3a x squared. And again, this is defined when x is equal to 2. So I can substitute 2 in here. Uh, that ends up being 12a. The limit of that derivative has to approach the same value from both the negative side and the positive side. So I need to go find my right hand limit. Okay, that's the limit as x approaches to the right hand side. Uh, that's going to be using my value where x is greater than 2 of my derivative. So that's of negative 2 times x minus 3. And once again, I can substitute in 2 here, because this is defined. That's going to be negative 2 times 2 minus 3. So negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to 2. So that means that 12a equals 2. Of course, if I solve this equation, uh, I now have the system in which 8a plus b is equal to 6, and 12a is equal to 2. Of course, I can just divide both sides by 12 here and find out that a is equal to 1 sixth. Um, I can substitute back in to my other equation. It's going to be 8 times 1 sixth plus b is equal to 6. Uh, that is 8 sixths. Of course, 8 sixths is the same thing as 4 thirds plus b is equal to 6. Uh, and if I find a final solution over here, 6 minus 4 thirds is going to end up being 4 and 2 thirds. And that is my value of b. So the final system here, if I wanted to substitute those back in, uh, I could substitute those values into the original function. And in this case, uh, that's not going to change the first equation. The second equation would end up being 1 sixth x cubed plus the value of 4 and 2 thirds. And uh, that would be the actual equation that I would use there on problem number 26.